The Good Vibrations podcast is made possible by sponsorship from the Phoenix Light Foundation. Visit the phoenixlightfoundation.co.nz for more information. Hello and welcome to Good Vibrations. Uh, you're joining me, Phyllis Brown, and many thanks for the feedback from last week's show. Lots of people reflecting on what's happening for them in terms of manifesting their dream job. And um, I think this week you're going to be really, really intrigued with my guest in the studio uh, today because it's something I know I get asked a lot about and um, I know that she gets asked a lot about, which is why she's here today. So we're talking to Mel Keim about soulmates and twin flames. Hello and welcome, Mel. Hello, thank you for having me. So it's a huge topic, but before we get massive. into the topic, it is massive. massive. Absolutely massive. I want you just to tell the listener just a little bit about yourself, just about your spiritual journey or what got you on to the, the track of soulmate and twin flames. That's a big question. It is. It is. <laughs> um, so I think that my spiritual journey started, I was probably about 18. When I first started my spiritual journey, um, I went into a variety of different modalities such as Reiki, crystal therapy, that kind of stuff. Um, started off um, with my own business. It was called Connective Living. It's now changed to MK Therapies. Hmm. Um, so people may know me from Connective Living. Yeah. Um, then I started to accidentally hmm. kind of get into this whole soulmate twin flame thing and it was just a very unintentional thing it happened naturally I was really aware of you know um, spiritual influences helping out and it's just kind of directed me down this path and here we are here you are here yeah. are. I know for me uh, I think from a personal perspective I get lots of clients who they they come and they're looking for their soulmate no, yeah. or they're coming they're looking for their twin flame yeah. and I don't think they have a real understanding of what that actually means so I think for the listener, would you be so kind as just to describe what the difference is? Because I yeah. personally feel there is a difference. Yeah. People tend to merge them. It's the one thing. Yeah. But I think that they're, they're two very different very relationships, separate. aren't they? Yeah. yeah. So if you could just tell the listener what they are. Yeah. So I've got three different types. Mm. So we've got the evolutional or the karmic, um, you know, relationship. And they are generally people who we maybe go to school with when we're five. We just play with them in the playground, then we don't really see them again. We might pop into them once or twice, but never see them again. They're just yeah. someone that's another soul on this earth. Yeah. Then we have our soulmates. Now, our soulmates are a part of our soul family. Mm. And our soul family is huge, mm. absolutely massive. Um, and people tend to say, oh, I want to meet my soulmate. I really want to meet my soulmate. Yeah. Please help me find my soulmate. And my response is always, well, which one? Yeah. Which one do you want? Oh, okay. Yep. Because your soulmate can be your mother, your soulmate can be your cousin, your best friend, your boss, the cat, you know, it could be <laughs> anything and anyone around you. Yeah. And generally the soulmate is someone who is your perfect match. Right. And they will match you to allow you to look at yourself and then they'll challenge you or they might help you along your spiritual journey or just life in general. Mm. And they are everywhere, absolutely everywhere. However, mm. the twin flame is generally what people are asking about when they say, I want to find the one. Oh, okay. I want to find the one or help me find my soulmate, the one, the one person that's going to be with me forever, the one person who's going to love me, the one person who's going to give me everything that I want and desire. And they kind of get that confused with soulmates. Yeah. But the twin flame is literally a split half of your soul. Mm. So when we think about the yin and the yang, mm. it's divided in the middle. We've got a divine masculine and a divine feminine. And it doesn't matter whether you are heterosexual or you're in a, a gay relationship. Um, either or one soul will have the divine masculine energy and the other will have the divine feminine. And what happens is, is that the twin flame relationship is there to be your perfect mirror, which is different oh, to being a perfect, perfect match. match. Yes. Right, right. Okay. And so the twin flame relationship, being the perfect mirror, is that they will show you exactly who, what, you, are. who you are. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so that can be quite challenging. That can be really challenging in the sense that if you're not ready to see parts of yourself that you don't want to look at, yeah. your twin flame is going to show you absolutely 
everything good and bad about you, whether you want it or not. Wow. Because yeah. I think what people, obviously people are looking for the one true love. They want yeah. that everlasting partnership. And yeah. I don't know if that's just a misnomer. I think that you create partnerships mm. and you develop that because where you are, I mean, I met Michael when I was in my 20s yeah. and I'm now in my mid 50s and I'm not the person I was no, in my 20s. Absolutely right. So we've we've helped each other develop yep. to who we've become. Yep. Um, would have I said that he was the one when I met him? I said, no because yeah. you know we're sitting in a bar and he professed his love to yeah. me and he's going oh, I love you I love you and Meat Loaf came on and I said see that song that's where I am right now two out of three ain't bad yeah you know but I'm never going to love you I like you and yeah. I want you but I'm not going to do the love thing mm -hmm. uh, and of course he was devastated yes. you know <laughs> <laughs> he was absolutely devastated. However, we got over that bump because it took me time to to figure out, well, actually, is this someone that I can grow with? Yes. And is this someone in it who challenges me? Now, interestingly enough, he does challenge me. Yeah. He does challenge mm -hmm. me, and I suppose I challenge him. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if he's my twin flame, mm -hmm. but he certainly, he certainly made me grow. Yes. So when you get people who come to you who feel they've they've found the one mm -hmm. and then they're devastated mm -hmm. that it's not what they think it mm -hmm. it would be for them, mm -hmm. how how do you cope with that? How do you help them through that process? Or can you help them to look at the relationship slightly differently? Yeah. So quite often there's this new age process out there where everyone wants to meet their twin flame and they manifest for their twin flame and then bam they think they've found their twin flame yeah. and actually what they realize is that they've just met a soulmate right. and they get quite disappointed okay um because the soulmates will also challenge there are soulmates out there that we have as romantic partners mm. and they will challenge us and we then challenge them back as well mm. however when we get disappointed that we haven't found the one or we haven't allowed our relationship to um because we tend to sometimes in our mind visualize and manifest for something and then it doesn't turn out that way we become mm. disappointed mm. and so when we're looking at that and we're thinking okay what's going on here why are they not my twin flame or what is it about this person most of the time it's because they are your soulmate mm. and they are here specifically for a reason um, to support you to help you with something I often think about soulmates is that you know that friendship thing of a reason season or a lifetime yeah, yeah. so they might come for a reason um, or they might come for a season mm -hmm. or they may come for a full lifetime mm -hmm. so I just recently had um, a soulmate mm up here and out of nowhere mm. actually I manifested for him mm -hmm. I was like right okay universe bring someone I'm ready I'm ready and um, out of nowhere I opened up the door one day and there was this man standing there and um, I immediately got this knowing sensation and this thought went through my mind of oh I've been looking for you mm. and it was fantastic and we dated for a while and then it kind of you know disappeared and I was yeah. really disappointed yeah. and I thought what is going on here what what, that, what was the point in that mm. what was the point in beginning a relationship with someone to have it just not just to have it fizz out and then when I really thought about it and I really went back into myself and looked at my soul purpose and my soul journey I realized that actually he was there to teach me mm. that it's okay to not be afraid of being in a relationship right. it's okay to actually have relationships with men and that not all men are going to hurt me mm. not all men are going to put me in a position where I feel so low about myself mm -hmm. that I'm not happy mm. so it was a beautiful example of I was so disappointed mm. but actually when I really reflect on it mm. he taught me a lot mm. Yeah, and I think you know I've got one of my questions here, which is you know why do we create these types of personal connections? Mm. And I think you've given an example there of why people do come into our lives. Mm. So, do you have any sort of advice for people who are maybe at this point in time coming to the end of a relationship, or someone has just said, "Well, that's it; it's over," and they mm. don't know why it's over? So, how how can they come to terms with that? Is you know obviously you have your own 
particular skills mm. you know you're a qualified counsellor and mm. so you you understand the mechanics and the psychology mm. of emotional behavior but mm. how how can how can someone who maybe doesn't have that skill maybe come to terms with something like that mm -hmm. so i think a lot of you know journaling journaling yep. is a really great tool for if you don't want to go and see you know a counsellor or you yeah. don't want to go and have you know spiritual help like reiki or crystal mm. therapy journaling is a really great mm. way mm. you know, I know journaling that, phyllis yes. <laughs> <laughs> all about journaling yeah. is a really great way for you to really look at what you're writing and then reflect on it yeah. and when you are writing down all kinds of stuff come out all of your deepest emotions and the things that you think actually I wasn't aware of that will just suddenly appear out of nowhere and you're looking at it on paper yeah. it's like wow actually that makes sense to me now yeah so absolutely you know journaling write it down or yeah. you know you can if you really want to yeah write it down and burn it yeah you know whatever yeah. it is that's you know fits for you yeah but yeah when it comes to those patterns that we you know some people say um that they just go round and round in circles. Mm. So they keep attracting the same kind mm. of relationships. Yes. So they go from maybe one relationship where they get um, emotionally abused yeah. to the next one, or they yeah. get one relationship where the partner cheats on them and they go yeah. to another one, they get another partner yeah. that cheats on them. And that comes to just personal friendships as well, not necessarily just you know, that really deep romantic mm. relationships. We, we go from friendships. Yep. And in the families same. as well. And families families as well. Yep. So in terms of that, you know, People get a little bit confused. They get actually quite peed off with it, really. Mm. So it's frustrating. Yeah. So why would that be? Why do people keep cycling through the same personality mm -hmm. types, and and how can they change that rhythm mm -hmm. in their life? Yep. So there's two different possible mm. reasons for that. Number one, it could be that it is on a, um, a soul level, and you mm -hmm. have signed up to experience that, and that's another whole topic in yeah. itself. You yeah. know, yeah. signing up for that kind of stuff. So sometimes it could genuinely just be that you've signed up to learn something and you have to repeat it over and over and over again and by the end of it you're thinking oh my god I've had enough when is this going to end mm -hmm. or it could be that actually there's something going on inside of you mm -hmm. that you are not actually looking at or the universe is bringing you clear signs mm. look you need to change this or you need to start looking and going in this direction rather than being stagnant yeah. we're going to keep putting you in the same situation over and over and over again until you actually finally open your eyes and go oh mm. actually I need to leave this relationship mm. or actually mm. my friend mm. you know that keeps stealing from me as an yeah. example yeah. you know why is she doing that mm. and why do I keep allowing her to do that mm. so it's two different possible things there mm. yeah and so I know for you which I I'm really uh just so excited for you. I know mm. that you've been working really stoically in the background on your book. Yes. So what is the name of your book? So my book is called One Soul, Two Bodies. Okay. Yeah. So I'd like you just to explain to the audience the journey that led to that book. You don't need to go into any personal yes. details, yeah. obviously. Um, and just the premise for the book and what and how they can use that book. What are they going to get from that mm. book that will help them relate to their own personal circumstances? Mm. That's a really good question. <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, so, yeah, so I've been writing a book. Yep. We're near the end of the journey. Like the Twin Flame journey, it is a huge, horrendous journey at times, but also incredible. <laughs> the book has also been horrendous and incredible as well. <laughs> a beautiful reflection. Um, so, yeah, so basically the book is a real-life situation, and um, it basically describes my journey of my twin flame journey um, because when I first got onto my twin flame journey it was very new to me and mm -hmm. I didn't quite understand the um, the astro traveling and you know being so connected with a person mm -hmm. that it was having such a huge effect on my life mm -hmm. and so I began to kind of look for you know help elsewhere and I found these new age twin flame people mm -hmm. that just were saying all of these things and I thought that really does not mm. connect to my experience at all and the deeper that I looked the more that I found that there were others out there that were on the same journey as I am and were also struggling to find real stories yeah. real experiences rather than this kind of false ideal um 
you know, thing of the twin flame relationship is incredible and that's all you should be striving for in Happy life. Ever after. Happily ever after when yeah. it really isn't. Yeah. Um, in some cases. Yeah. So um, my book is specifically around that and it tells my journey, but at the same time, it has a lot of other things in it, like meditations. Um, it has dreams in it. It's all, it's got really cool stuff in it that people can read. And basically, there was no point in writing it. <laughs> I, there was really no point in it. I just started to, you know, that journaling thing I talked about. Yeah. I just genuinely started to journal down what I was experiencing, mm-hmm. what I was seeing, feeling, and it's kind of molded into the book. Yeah. And, you know, if someone picks it up and they've never heard of the twin flame journey, mm-hmm. you know, just hope that maybe it inspires them to see something different. Yeah. Or if someone is experiencing it yeah. and they're looking at these, you know, new age people that are saying, you know, you're going to marry your twin flame tomorrow, you know, yeah. um, that actually they can think, actually, I'm not experiencing that. And yeah, this is a bit more yeah. realistic. Yeah. yeah. And you feel you have other books to come. You feel this is with this journey that you've been on and with your evolution, mm-hmm. both in terms of your spiritual journey and obviously, you know, with your qualification and mm-hmm. and sort of really talking to people on that quite that deep mm-hmm level with your your clinical counselling mm. do you feel that there are more books in the pipeline what, what do you feel about oh, that do you think no I keep getting people say to me all the time Mel you've got to write more books the first <laughs> one's so good and I think yeah we'll see we'll yeah. just see yeah. you know the first one just kind of appeared out of nowhere yeah. Yeah. Um, and the others may just appear out of nowhere yeah. as well I have no yeah. set intention yeah. so yeah. we're going with the flow yeah yeah oh, beautiful beautiful yeah now with us here in the audience they've been extremely quiet they've been absolutely beautiful so what I thought I'd do, Mel, if you yes. don't mind, is we'll just open up to the audience. So any comments or any questions you'd like to ask, Mel? So how do you describe or convey in the spiritual world people that fall out of love? So they meet, they have this great journey. Mm-hmm. Where, where does that kind of put them when that happens? And how do people deal with that? So when they fall out of love from a spiritual perspective? Yeah. Yeah, so that I think comes down to what we sign up for. So we have a soul contract when we first, you know, um, come down to earth. And we have soul contracts with other people. And within those contracts, we are then writing down, okay, I'm going to marry you for 10 years and I'm going to be in love with you. Then suddenly you may, something's going to happen. Mm. Something may happen. And that is actually in you know, as a part of the um, the soul contract that you've signed up for. Sometimes it just happens. Sometimes there is a true meaning for it. But, um, yeah, that's that's kind of a hard question to answer, actually. Yeah. I, it, I think from my perspective, um, Shelley, it's like um, what I said earlier, people do outgrow each other. Yes. I mm. think people join, they maybe marry with a set set of mm. goals and a set perspective of mm. where they want their relationship to go. Mm-hmm. And then one person might just do some work or they might find interests, which then creates that divide. And Mm -hmm. suddenly one person's over here exploring or being active and one person's being introvert. And how do you get that back? You know, how do you get Mm -hmm. that back? So sometimes we start a journey with shared goals and and destination and then and then we veer off from each other's path Mm. um and i I think it's a a natural thing i think Mm. um i think whatever happens when we have children involved i I feel that the experience that they go through Mm. in terms of dealing with that at their level i think that then helps them because that Mm. will be part of their spiritual journey absolutely yeah because that was my whole that's Mm. what started me on that really deep stuff Mm. when uh, my reiki master i was moaning about my family and my reiki master said well you chose your family and i'm like no 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 why (laughs) why would i choose to have my father die at the age of four that didn't Mm. make sense to me yeah it just didn't make sense to me but i had to really suck it up Mm. and as you would say i put my big girl pants on one of your favorite sayings and um and I just had to sort of think about that. And I thought, well, who have I become because of that? So again, it's it's mm. it's the family stuff or the personal stuff or the friendship stuff yeah. or the colleague stuff. Yeah. yeah. And also I think that relationships always have conditions. You know, whether we are aware of it or not, we go into a relationship with some kind of condition. Um, and that's the difference between, you know, like soul connections and the twin flame connection. The soul connections, all of us will have some kind of condition on each other. Mm. Um, 
um, whether we're aware of it or not, the twin flame has no conditions. It is 100%, um, you know, I'll see you for your true self no matter what and I will not have any judgments. Nothing you do will upset me. Nothing you can say to me will upset me. Whereas in other situations, those conditions can have that effect on people. Yeah. Even if you've been with them for 20 odd years or the, your mother. Your mother might suddenly say something and you're hurt and then bam, there's a, an effect on the relationship. Hmm. Any other questions, audience? Do you find that with the twin flame relationship, yes. that sometimes, although people want that reflection, mm. they can't cope yes. with that reflection? And then what sort of thing, how do you help them with that? Yeah, so that's mainly the biggest issue with twin flames, is that people, when they go and they search up twin flames, and they think, oh, this sounds incredible, this new age idea that they are incredible, amazing, but they don't talk about that, actually, they will mirror everything to you. The deepest parts of you that you do not want to look at, they will reflect that back to you, and that can be really, really hard and challenging, and so suddenly, you know, you're faced with this awful thing in front of you and quite often people don't know how to deal with it so they come to people like me and are like how do I deal with this what do I do and the only thing that you can do is take it back onto yourself and look at yourself and go okay they are literally just reflecting something to me that I need to work on same for them you will be reflecting things back to them constantly that is you know maybe annoying to them they then need to look at that and go okay they're reflecting that to me so that I can work on it myself so anyone that comes to me I'm always saying what are they showing you they are just literally showing you something that you need to work on yeah and that is confronting because we're, we're all perfect. Yes, yes, that's right. That's absolutely right. We are the picture of perfection, Mel. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm really aware of this. Um, I've got a friend and her um, partner really, really wanted to meet his twin flame. And um, they had children together and, you know, they're in a really serious relationship. And he manifested and manifested and manifested for his twin flame to come. And so what happened? He manifested so much. She appeared and it absolutely destroyed their relationship and you know everything they had going on not only because it was too much for both of the twins confronting each other but also that then had a huge a wider effect on his current you know relationship and family so yeah your twin flame when they come in it is like a ticking time bomb <laughs> yeah before it explodes mm. but it's incredible as well it's really really cool it's incredible <laughs> yeah I think it's a gift I think if you've got someone who irritates the pants off you mm. then you have to look at that irritation yourself and once yes. you deal with that irritation yourself that's the gift yes you, you move on that's right and then the same again another irritation comes up you go oh my god they really irritate me and you go well what does that mean, mean for, for me? me yes and then bang that's yeah. it so they are a gift really but mm. they're hard work they are I think very 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 hard work yeah. extremely hard work yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. But then you have this unconditional love for them and you just want to be around them. Yeah. So yeah. it's really hard. Beautiful. Oh, well, Mel, it's been just divine having you on the show. So how can people get in touch with you? How can they find you? So, You've got a website, Facebook page? Yep, you can find me on Facebook. It's mm -hmm. M.K Therapies. Okay, yeah. okay. And people could just private message yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. See what you're doing. Have you mm -hmm. got any sort of uh, release date yet for your publication? No, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on my journey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my journey with that one. It's there. We're, it's aiming, there. we're aiming for the end of the year. Good, yeah, good, good. We're on a journey. Yeah, well, as soon, I can assure you, listener, as soon as the book is... Uh, has been released because I'm first in the queue. Yeah, along with coffee. everyone else. <laughs> I will uh, I will certainly let our listeners know. Yeah. Um, and what I've got is I've got this lovely little saying, which I thought in that terms of perfection, which I thought would be quite good. So this is a message for everyone just to take away. We talk about perfection. Mm. Uh, being happy doesn't mean that everything is perfect. It means that you've decided to look beyond the imperfections. Yes. And I think that really sums up both ourselves yes. when we have to take on board, wow, I've manifested this person mm. and he irritated it's the backside of me why yep. is that and what have I got to do mm. and even looking at them maybe not quite as the perfect partner mm. but someone who's going to be such a gift yes, in your life really. absolutely yeah. yeah 
Yeah, mm -hmm. so something for you all to think about. Next week on the show, we've got Maria Gold coming um, and she's going to talk about life changes and she's also going to talk about her networking organisation, how where that inspiration came from and just, yeah, just what she's achieved in such a short time. So that'll be really exciting for you if you're into networking. Um, as always, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook and the website, which is Phyllis Brown. Uh, NZ and of course subscribe to our podcast get the word out there and send the good vibrations out as far as you possibly can because really we could be doing with some so until the next show bye for now this podcast was brought to you by the Phoenix Light Foundation for personal development courses, visit the phoenixlightfoundation.co.nz and use the code PHOENIX50 for 50% off all courses. Mm -hmm.